Hey, welcome to the Intentional Mind Podcast. I'm your host, Ange Barnard, and today we are talking about creating a vision for you and your partner. I'm talking couples, goals, vision that you guys can work on together. Now, even if you don't have a partner, keep listening because you may want to have one in the future, and it's important that y'all have a vision together. And if you do have a partner, do you have a vision together? Like, are you intentional about working on things together? I think many of us have our own separate goals and things we're working on, but I think it's really important in a relationship to have things that you are intentionally working on together. I think that keeps the spark in your relationship. It keeps that excitement energy. It keeps you talking to each other. It keeps you supporting each other when things get hard because you're regularly talking about the progress that you're making and what's working, what's not working, all of that stuff. And what do you base it on? You base it on a vision. If you don't have a vision, then you can't have those conversations around this is working well and this isn't working well and what, what can we do to improve it, right? So the reason why this topic comes up is because my husband and I just celebrated our six-year anniversary. And it got me thinking about what are we doing really well and what can we improve on? And I believe the area that we do very well in is setting a vision for us to work towards together and making stuff happen. Like we have a lot of fun together, but we're really intentional about designing the life that we have now. And I have found over the years that this is very rare. From coaching a lot of people, I've noticed, because I get to know a lot about people's personal life, from being a career coach and ultimately a life coach, let's be real, I really consider everyone's life as a whole, I hear a lot about what's going on in people's relationships, right? And I've realized that many people do not have a vision that they're working on with their significant other, or they're not in regular communication about their dreams, the other person's dreams, and the things they're working on together. Because you know what happens is many of us get so busy with life, you know, and we're just checking boxes and we're like, I don't really feel excited about anything, you know. And sometimes people struggle answering this question. What are you excited about? They're like, "Mm, mm, I don't know. I just, uh." if you feel like you struggle with that, that's because you need a vision of what you're working towards. And you can be excited about the things that are in that vision, you know? So to create that spark in your relationship, to keep it alive, that vision I feel like is necessary. So like I said, I feel like this is something my husband and I do very well and I'm very proud of. And of course, there's all things, there's there's things all of us could work on in our relationships, right? I'm gonna talk about those today too. But the point of this episode is to get you thinking about really creating a vision with your partner and what's involved in that. Okay, so how do I want to set this up? I got three strategies for you on what to do to craft that vision. But first, before I get into those strategies, I got to say the reason why I came up with this topic, obviously, you know, we celebrated our anniversary But it's also because I'm obsessed with this whole concept of evaluation. I think we should be regularly evaluating how things are going as it relates to the visions that we're working on. And I also think we should be regularly evaluating our relationships, you know, and a great time to do it is when your anniversary is, you know, and you're like, let's reflect what's going well, what can we improve on? And I'm a huge nerd about this because I believe this is, in, this is essential for you to intentionally design your life. You have to have regular evaluation. Businesses that are the most successful evaluate how things are going. Relationships that are the most successful do the same thing. People who intentionally design their life, they evaluate constantly like, am I making progress towards the things I desire? right? This is important. So that should be a regular habit for you is evaluation. And I will say, I really feel like this thirst around like evaluation or this love for it that I have, I think this started in grad school. So shout out to Dr. Sal Vitor. I was going to say Sal. He goes by Sal for short. Alimo, who I just got the blessing of being on his podcast. And he's been a mentor to me and 
my life. He was my professor in grad school. He was my advisor. And he taught program evaluation, which is one of my favorite courses. Because I think before taking that class, I didn't really think about evaluation and why it was so important, you know? But it is. It's so important. Okay. So I just had to give a shout out there. Um, It's really cool, too, to just a side note, to be able to be a guest um, and viewed as an expert in something on one of your mentors' podcasts, you know, to see that come full circle for me. I feel really excited about that. So just want to put that good energy out there. All right. So the strategies. Let's talk about it. Okay. Um. Well, first off, let me share with you guys what what we, me and my husband do well in our relationship. Like just take some notes of things and maybe you could be like, hmm, how is this going with in my relationship? It can get you thinking. That's the whole point of this episode. And then also I'll talk about some things that I personally want to work on in our relationship and maybe that will get you thinking too. So what my husband and I do well, we prioritize having fun together. That is a priority to us. And if you look at how we spend our money, it shows that. If you look at pictures that we share, it shows that. You know, if you look at our schedule, it shows that. That's a huge priority to us. So I want you to think about you and your partner now. Is having fun a priority to you? Is it? Because your schedule will show it if it is. Your money will show it if it is. Your bank account will show it, right? You'll give energy to it if it is. And some people will will say like, yeah, that's a priority to me, but I'm not living in alignment with that, right? I'm not ensuring that happens on a regular basis. And if that's you, I encourage you to change that, right? To actually live in alignment with the things that are most important to you. And the way that you do that is you give time, energy, and money to that thing. That's you living in alignment with it. Okay, so sometimes that looks like, you know, people have a set date night that you go on and you stick to it. You arrange for things to happen. Like, you know, I have friends who they have the babysitter scheduled for when they go out, you know, every week. It's like it's a done thing that's happening every week or twice a month or whatever it is. It's set up. They're intentional about that. So I encourage you to think about that. That's important to you too. prioritizing fun in your relationship Does your time, energy, money, all the resources show that? Or do you need some adjustments there? What needs to happen? So I feel like that's something we do very well. We have a budget line for it and everything. Um, We talk a lot about what we desire. We make time to talk about it. And I think that, yeah, again, that's something we do well. I'm talking about we go for walks on the regular where we go for drives and we're always bringing it up. We're always talking about like, what is it that we desire? How can we make things better? And I'm always sparking those questions and getting that conversation going. And sometimes you, listener, here right now, listening, have to be that person to spark the conversation and get the dreaming to happen, get the brainstorming to happen, right? That's you being a good coach in your relationship. You ask the questions and they start thinking and the energy starts flowing. That is about being intentional, about the energy that's there. So many of us want to complain about how someone else shows up, but we aren't intentional about shifting the energy. We forget that we have power in shifting the energy, right? Maybe we can ask them something different that shifts the energy. Maybe we can help their brain focus on the goodness that's there instead of also going down with them, you know? Okay, so this might look like in your relationship, it might look like you hear a significant other complaining about something. And instead of saying like, well, you know, you should look at this. You should look at this good thing happening. Their brain's not there. So instead, that's called spoon feeding. You should be doing this. You should look at this, right? So instead, you can say, what about X thing? What did you like about X thing? What are you excited about? What are you looking forward to? What went well, right? So that gets their brain to have to search for the thing that's in alignment with that word, like what went well, what they're excited about, right? All of those um, anabolic types of energy, right? Love, joy, all of that. I kind of think about it as like a Google search bar and you're typing in the word love and all the love things pop up, right? It's because I intentionally typed in the word love 
right? I asked it to look for that. So just being intentional about your questions that you're asking someone to shift their energy, that's really important. I see people do this sometimes with me. Like, let's say I start being negative and I'm complaining about something because I ain't perfect over here. I'm keeping it real. I'm not, right? So I'm, I, I might be like complaining about something and someone, like my husband does this a lot, he will say something like, so what about um, X thing? Like, did you like that? How did that go? What did you like about it? What went well? What are you excited about? And I see him like do that right when I'm like complaining about something. And it's because he doesn't want to hear it and he wants to shift the energy that's there. That's being intentional about the energy that's in the space, that the energy that's in our relationships, you know? We got to help each other with that because we're all imperfect human beings just working on our stuff. Okay, so the next thing is we know each other's goals. Like my husband knows very well what's important to me and what I'm working on because I communicate that and the regular and the same thing with him telling me because I ask him about it. I show interest in wanting to know. I have coached people who will tell me that their significant other doesn't know that X thing is really important to them, that they want to work on that, that that's a dream of theirs, right? So make sure that they're aware so they can support you. And it's so easy for us to complain like, oh, I don't have the time, you know, or the kids are always bothering me when I'm trying to work on something. Well, did you communicate that this time was important for you to work on the thing? Did you tell your significant other about that dream and how they can support you? Were you clear in your communication of what they can do to help you make that dream a reality? Were you clear about how important it was to you? You know, that's some of the, the ownership that we need to take. The responsibility is like to clearly communicate what is important to us to clearly state what we need to support us versus expecting other people to know what that is. I mean, we've all been guilty of that. You know, we get frustrated that someone didn't show up a certain way, but we weren't clear about what it was that we desired, right? Okay, the next thing um, is we know each other's biggest values. In fact, we have values that align. That's, I mean, that's why I feel like I'm, I'm really proud of our marriage overall because I know that we know our values and we share the same values. And I was really intentional about finding my husband, right? I was looking for someone who shared my same values. So that was intentionality up front. But we regularly do things to honor those values. Like when we make decisions, we're like one big value of ours is freedom. And we will look at like, should we take this opportunity? Does it help honor my value of freedom? Or does it cause constriction? You know, does it cause me to not be able to travel when I want to? Does it affect my time freedom? Does it affect my creativity freedom? Right? And if those things are out of alignment with our, one of our biggest values, which is freedom, then we're not going to do those things because we want to live in alignment with our biggest values. We're going to try to find ways to honor the, that value. So what are your biggest values? Like when we made the decision to move back to the Midwest when we were living down south in South Carolina... It was a values-based decision. It was because we valued our family. We wanted to spend more time with our family. You know, that value started becoming more important to us. You know, when we moved down to South Carolina, we lived there for six or seven years or whatever it was, away from our family. At that time, uh, when we were just like fresh out of, you know, grad school and things like that, we, our value, I'm not saying our family wasn't important to us. But it was like we had other things that we felt like we valued more at that time. Family is always important, but you know what I mean, right? So um, we made that move and we went to honor those values. And as then it shifted. And then the value of family and by our definition was we were close to them. We got to spend more time with them. That would, that's what it would look like to honor that value. That kind of shifted. And that became more of a priority. Then our decisions changed to honor that value. And sometimes our values change in our life right? We value something at some age. Like sometimes I see clients where they really value freedom and autonomy. Like I've had clients I worked with career coaching clients where they had a schedule that was, they were traveling a lot. There was, but there was also a lot of flexibility with when they did do work and things like that. And then they're like, you know, I really value stability more, you know, and maybe that income was like less consistent with the other role that they did. And they're like, I just want consistency. I want a set schedule. And it's like things shifted, now they have a different value they're trying to work towards, 
you know, so things may shift in your life. It might be the other way where you're like, you want more freedom and autonomy, like, you know, right. But the whole point is having a conversation about these values, knowing them straight up and then thinking about how you guys can honor them together. And when you make decisions, ask, is this honoring my value? A big value that my husband and I have is is health. We really value our health as and we have this is the thing, too, when it comes to your values, you have your own definition of what that means to you. Okay, so health or family to me might be completely different to what it means to you. So it's important that you have that definition. My clients all come up with their personal definitions around what their values are. Okay, so with my value of health, what that means to me is my husband and I are active, regularly active. We like to do our walks. You know, we we are physically healthy. We look healthy, right? We eat healthy. We have high energy, all of that stuff. Well, with that being said, when it what it looks like to honor that value might be when we go out to eat, we're looking at what are the healthy items on the menu? Like what's in alignment with that value of health for us? You know, when we're trying to figure out what we're going to do in the evening, should we watch Netflix until we go to sleep? Or should we go for a walk and enjoy the sunset? What's in alignment with that value of health and honoring it? It's the walk and the sunset, right? Some of us, let's be real with ourselves, say we really value something, but again, we are not living in alignment with it. And can you talk to your significant other about that? Can we be like, hey, you know, we both said this is really important to us, but yet, wait, we're not we're not living in alignment with it or we're not dedicating resources to it. I hear often people will talk about their health being important to them, but they won't want to pay for their health. Right. They don't want to pay for the food that makes them feel their best. They don't want to pay more for the salad or pay more for the supplements that they need to take or the greens or whatever it is. So is that really important to you? Or are you just living out of alignment with it? You know, because if it's important, you're going to dedicate resources to it. Your bank account's going to show it. Your energy is going to show it. Your time, right? You guys get what I mean. But this is the conversations we also need to have with ourselves. This is why I also like to do an evaluation of how I'm honoring my values. That was the reason why when I left my last role, The reason why I left my last role is I noticed that there were some major values of mine that were being challenged. And the things that frustrate us the most when it comes to our careers, I'll say this as a career coach, is when we feel like some of our biggest values are being challenged. And maybe we don't even, we're not even aware, we don't have names of what those values are. But I bet you that if you feel frustrated about something, there's usually one or two things. One, you're living in out of alignment with your strengths, like you're not using the gifts God has given you in a way that feels good to you, or your biggest values are being challenged. So my question is, what are you going to do about it? You know? Okay, so what am I saying next here? We know our biggest values. We do healthy things together, like I just had mentioned. That's what we're doing well in our relationship. We encourage each other's health. I want to bring up this health thing because I've noticed a lot of couples where one person might be really unhealthy, you know, or sometimes usually it's you tend to mirror each other's, you know, habits. But sometimes I see where one person really wants to focus on their health and their significant other like does not care. And I feel like it's important that you talk to your significant other always about your dreams and goals and tell them what they can do to support you and also ask about theirs and what you can do to support them. I've seen couples where one person complains about the other person's health but they don't do anything to support their health. Like even, you know, when they're ordering food, it's not like you want to be naggy, but like, can you encourage healthy food choices? Can you be the one that goes for walks with them? Can you back off a little bit from your intensity level to help them? I've seen this with couples where one is super athletic and the other person's not. And then let's say they go out and they go do walks and the person's frustrated because they're like, I can't keep up with them. I can't keep hiking with them or walk with them or run with them or whatever it is. I'm just not gonna do it. But it's like, I, I always want to be like, oh, the person that's really athletic, can you tone it down a little bit and like help them enjoy the experience more? You know, and this is also like where you you stop being so selfish about what you want and you think about your significant other as well and to bring them up with you. One of the things I think that my husband has done very well is, you know, he's very adventurous and I've been like 
since I've been married to him, since I reflect back on all the adventures we've had, like, man, I have really just done so many things out of my comfort zone that I would not have done have I had I not been married to him, but that I also would not have done had he not introduced it to me in the way that he did. Because he's very mindful of like, letting, like, for example, before being with him, I didn't go and I didn't know how to even pitch a tent, let alone like tent out and, and like camp out and like hike through the Appalachian Trail or hike across Spain and like all that stuff. Like I was an adventurous like that. I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know how to set up a tent. So he, instead of just throwing me out to like a week out, you know, fending for yourself, filtering your own water, it was like, let's try one night. Let's try three days, right? Like you, he'd kind of tiptoed into it. And like made it so I didn't absolutely hate it. And even like running, you know, he he's so much faster than me, but he still will run with me, you know, so that we can be healthy together and joint together. And the same is true like around if there's other things that I'm working on that I will back off to support him and do the thing with him. Like, let, let me give you an example. So like I love to get up early. My husband does not. Right. And sometimes he'll want to exercise with me, but I'll be like, well, I want to get my workout done in the morning. Like that, that part of me is like, no, I want to do it in the morning. I don't want to wait until you wake up. Right. So the selfish part coming in. But what I'll do, knowing that that's a big value of both of ours, is I will be like, okay, I'll do something else in the morning, I'm compromising here, and then I'm going to work out with you when you're ready to get up. And this is the thing in our relationships that we need to think about is like give and take. Right. It's not like all about some people are trying to be so selfish around what it is that they desire, that you forget that this is a partnership. And this is the most important relationship that you have, you know, besides that with your creator, right? This is one of the things, the number one thing that will determine your success in every endeavor is that relationship you have with your significant other, aside from God. You know what I mean? Okay. So um, these are the things that I feel like my husband and I need to work on. And let me know if you may need to work on some of these things. For me personally is being patient, right? I can be very impatient. Um, And I noticed that about myself. I can also be very condescending in my tone. Like if, for example, sometimes I feel like my husband will ask me questions, the sneak keeping it real, that are just stupid. Like, I just feel like, like he, like, Ange, where's this? Where's that? Where's that? Like, I'm the person who knows where everything is. And sometimes I'll be like, I don't want to use my brain power right now to, to tell you, like, just look, open up the thing and see it. You know, you ever feel this way? Uh, but he'll result to just asking me and then I'll be like impatient. Or if I respond back, it's like in a con- condescending way, you know, and like, I don't like that about myself. I don't want to be, I don't want that habit to continue on where I talk to him in a condescending way. Like I want to honor him in our relationship. And I'm sure in certain, with certain things, he can work on being patient too. But that's an area I really want to improve on is how I'm talking to him when I am frustrated and then my patience in general. Okay. Because I know something like I would be, think about it. If you were ever to lose someone that you love so much, it's like you'd give any, you'd give everything to have a day where they asked you stupid questions. You know what I mean? Or they needed you for something, you know? Like that's just, that puts it in perspective for me. Okay. The other thing is not blaming each other for how a family member or a friend shows up. You ever do that with your significant other? Maybe they have a family member or a friend that acts a fool and you will blame them for it, even if they're not in control of how that person shows up because that's their friend, that's their family member, even though it's out of their control. That's something that I want to work on because I notice I kind of do that sometimes. Like if I'm frustrated with how, how someone else is showing up, I will take it out on my husband. And I just want to Stop doing that. Stop blaming in general for things that are out of his control, right? I think it's really important in relationships too not to be blaming each other just like I said in general because when things get hard, it's I've noticed a lot of couples will blame the other person for something they did that might be related to why it's hard. Just like putting it out there, their frustration on the other person. And the thing is, when things get hard, when the war happens, 
you don't turn around and start fighting each other, right? You partner up and fight the enemy. It's not about blaming each other. And I always like think about that. I just literally picture like a war happening and then turning to each other and trying to fight each other when it's like, no, let's let's get with each other. Let's support each other and fight the enemy, you know? All right, so all the things that I just talked about for the last 20 something minutes relate to the tip number one that I suggest you do if you wanna create a vision for you and your significant other, and that is to do some evaluation work. Now, the reason this is important for you to evaluate how y'all feel about how your life is going, how your relationship is going, just pick an area to evaluate, is because sometimes it can be really difficult for us to step into a dreamy state. I have learned over the years of teaching workshops and helping people clarify their vision is that many people struggle with the dreaming side of it. So what you can do is tap into the analytical part of their brain first, and that will help them get to the dreamy state. Here's what I mean by that is a good question to ask someone is like, what is it that's draining your energy? And this is the thing. When you ask that question, what's going to come up? Stuff that drains their energy, right? What are they going to be thinking about? Low energy stuff. That's going to bring up some of that catabolic energy for them. So you don't want to keep someone in that state. But you can ask them, and chances are you're probably well aware of some things that are draining their energy, but at least they can say that. And you open the door. Don't open the door to all the complaining, but have them state, this is the area that I feel like is draining my energy the, the most, this area of my life or this thing. And then let, let's say, for example, let's put this into an example. Let's say that I asked my husband this, like, you know, um, what is draining your energy the most right now? And he might be like, work is draining my energy the most, let's just say. And so it's the category of work in his life, er, life wheel, the category of work. And I would say, OK, so let's just say like you had to rate it on a scale of one to 10. 10 means you're like really satisfied with work and one means you're not. Where do you think you're at? And he might be like, um, I don't know, like a five. OK, so what would it take for you to move to a seven? What would it take? And he might have an idea of what that might take. Oh, if, you know, this happened, I changed my schedule at work or this thing or whatever it is. Right. And then you can say, well, what can, so that, that might be part of the vision, having X kind of schedule. This is just an example that I'm making up, right? So um, then it might, that might be part of something we put in the vision. And then he would be working towards getting that figured out to happen. And that's more of like an individual kind of goal. But that's a good place to start is talk about your significant others, like individual goals, and then figure out if anything relates to something that you both can have together. Like you might find that in the, the category of health, for example, that you both feel lower on satisfaction in that area of your life. Well, what can you work on together to bring that area up? You know, it might be something like, oh, we're going to sign up for a challenge together. We're going to do a half marathon together or a 5K or a hike across whatever together, you know, or like my husband and I were doing the rag bri, you know, biking across Iowa together. That I would put under my health category or my fun, I guess, category with a pen. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to make it fun no matter what. I really do think it'll be really fun. I do think I'm going to hurt, though. Let's be real. Um, OK, so that's a place to start. And is like have them pinpoint what area is draining their energy. And then sometimes you guys can brainstorm together, you know, what can make it better. So a better example would be the area like I had talked to my husband about this. Um, I said, what's draining your energy? And he said, you know, I wish that I didn't have to trade so much of my one on one time to make income. Like that, I guess, work category or income category of life. Right. And that's how we came up with the idea to do our Airbnb. Right. Because he was like, well, and, and so after he said that, he's like, um, I feel that that's draining my energy just thinking about that. And I was like, well, what can we do? Like, what can we do to make it better? So let's say it's at a six. What would we do to bring it to an eight? And he'd be like, if we had a passive income opportunity. And I was like, huh. Well, what about when we travel? Like, maybe we can Airbnb our home while we are traveling. 
And then maybe we can find some people to help us manage it, clean it, do those things. And it's more passive then, right? It doesn't require us to be here to do it. Okay. So then what happened, guys? You, you all know if you've been listening to the show that, that our home is an Airbnb now and we Airbnb it when we are gone. Okay. So that goal became or that vision became a reality because it started with a conversation around something that we didn't like. And then that led to something, creating something that we wanted in our life, right? So the contrast equals clarity. Okay, so the next tip I have for you is to, after you get clarity from pointing out the contrast first, then ask yourself, how can we work on this together? How can I support that other person's goal? If you feel like it's more an individual thing, how can you make some, it something that you can do together? So how can we work on this together or how can I support them is the next question you should be asking. All right. And then the last tip I have for you is to create a bucket list of things you would like to be doing together. Like you can have a summer bucket list of things that you guys are working, you want to do every summer together. Like Ian and I just created a list in our phone of all the things that we want to do every summer. Like we are creating some traditions around things though. Like we always want to swim across Bixler Lake or he does, um, but I'll go with him. <laughs> Couples goals, supporting him. And um, we always want to do a through hike. We always want to have family over at our home and have like a celebration. We always want to go camping. We always want to do some kind of other adventure trip or a challenge, you know, sign up for something that challenges our body. Or we always want to like you, you think about those things. Like what are those things that you want to be doing every summer? So it can be traditions. It can be new things on the bucket list, but you can set set periods of time. And that will help you like, hey, you know, let's say in the fall, what do we want to do every fall? Like we know we have a festival that we love to go to. It's always in the calendar. We want to make sure that that's part of every fall. We want to make sure that certain things are a part of every winter, right? So just talking about those things, brainstorming, especially when you're on a drive or there's any other downtime and putting it in, a pho- in your phone, making a list, that will really help you because that's starting to be intentional about making that happen or putting it in the calendar. And it can even be something like, you know, every year we want to do a trip to a certain, a new place or we want to go to the same place every year. Like we realized that we loved diving in Bonaire and we're like, that's going to be something that we want to do every year. So every year in the winter, when it's really cold here, let's go somewhere warm. Let's go to Bonaire and let's dive together and make that a tradition for ourselves. You know, so just be thinking about what are those things that you want to be doing together? Keyword is together. Okay, so let's just quick recap the tips that I'm giving you to create a vision for you and your partner. Number one is to start with evaluation. Check in, how are things going in your life in general or in your relationship together? It's it's really helpful to think about what is draining your energy. So tip number two is to ask that question, what is draining your energy? And then create a goal based on that contrast that you notice, oh, I don't like this. Okay, what will help shift that energy up? What will make things better? And then the next tip is to think about how can you support them in achieving that goal or that vision, or how can you work on it together? Okay, so start there. That will really help you get, you know, the juices flowing, brainstorming, and start creating some kind of vision or something you guys can be working on together. All right, I hope you found this episode really helpful. If you did and you haven't left us a review, please do so. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.